by chance or design. God, the creator. Let's suppose that you live along the beach. One morning, you get up early and decide to walk along the sandy shore. It's a beautiful scene. The rising sun rays bounce off the water. Waves crash on the shore. As you walk down the beach in quietness, you notice a set of footprints in the sand in front of you. Then you notice a second and a third set of footprints. You look as far as you can down the beach, but you don't see anyone. What do all these footprints tell you? They simply say this. Although you can't see anyone, someone was there. Someone walked down the beach before you. Let me ask you another question. If you stand outdoors and look around, what do you see? Grass? Trees? Hills or mountains? Flowers? Streams or lakes of water? And maybe animals? In the daytime, you may see the sun the sky or clouds. At night, you may see thousands upon thousands of stars or perhaps the moon and this entire vast universe, including Earth, with its delicate ecosystems. It's very complex. If you see a house, do you ever think that somehow the house just made itself? No. You realise that someone made that house. It had to have been designed and carefully built. If you see a road, do you think the road just made itself? Or that someone made it? Even though roads and houses are far simpler than worlds and human life, we know they're too complex and organised to have just happened by accident. So how did this complex world get here? How did you get here? Who made you? Today, we're going to look at what the Bible says about how life began here on earth. We will begin to learn about the God who claims to be the designer and creator of everything. The God who claims to have been there when this world came into existence. The Bible begins by saying very simply, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 On the first day of creation week, God created light and began the cycle of days and nights. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. On day 2, God made the sky above us and separated the water on the earth from the water in the sky. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. The third day, God made the dry land appear created the seas and covered the earth with plant life. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, 11 and 13. 
On the fourth day, God caused the sun and moon to appear in the sky. He also created the stars. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. On the fifth day, the Bible describes how God made birds and fish and other sea creatures. Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the faces of the firmament of the heavens so the evening and the morning were the fifth day genesis chapter 1 verse 20 and 23 the sixth day of creation was the most important so far then god said let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 26 to 27 and verse 31. Not only did God make the animals on day six, but he also made his crowning creation of all, mankind. Adam and Eve did not evolve or just happen. The Bible says that God designed them in his image. He is the great engineer the intelligent designer who brought us into existence. And the work of creation was not the work of God the Father alone. It was a work that involved the entire Godhead, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Genesis tells us, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And John tells us even more clearly that Jesus was the active agent in our creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him, Nothing was made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 and verse 14. The Bible speaks of what we know as the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Godhead consists of three persons, all alike in character, yet all distinct individuals. Jesus operated as the active agent to create everything. The Apostle Paul reminds us of the mystery from which the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9.
Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 also tells us that when God created the world, that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. On the seventh day, God's work of creation was done, so he rested, and he set aside that seventh day as a day of rest. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. But is this brief account of origins really credible? Is there evidence today to point to an intelligent designer behind the vast universe? The human body gives us amazing evidence of design and a designer. Consider just one part of the human body, the eye. Scientists tell us that the intricate design of the eye makes even the most advanced cameras on earth seem like a child's toy by comparison. The eye changes light into messages that reach the brain in ways even the most advanced laboratories on earth can't reproduce. Brain cells change these messages into the miracle of sight. A design that even the most intelligent scientists cannot duplicate or improve upon. There is no way that the eye could have resulted from evolution, as some scientists claim. For that to happen, all of the complex parts would have to develop by accident at the same time in order to work properly. And that is impossible. Far more than just being useful, the human eye shows us that we have a loving creator who wants us to see the beauties that he has made in his wonderful creation. No wonder the psalmist wrote, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Psalms 139 verse 14. Man's body and mind show that we have a loving wise designer. Just like the footprints in the sand, we knew someone had been there, even if we never saw that person. So when we see things in the natural world that are examples of design and intelligence, these are like footprints that tell you someone must exist who appreciates beauty and who made all things. Think of the migration of the birds one of the greatest mysteries of nature. How can birds weighing less than 30 grams or an ounce fly thousands of miles and kilometres non-stop to a destination they have never seen? How could fish find streams where they were hatched? Up to 1,900 kilometres away or 1,200 miles across open oceans. How did they learn to know when and where to go? Who taught the honeybee, with a brain no larger than a pinhead, to make the honeycomb an engineering marvel? Who is the mastermind behind it all? Job tells us, But now ask the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? Job chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. Yes, God did it all. And it's not just in this amazing human body or in the mysteries of life here on this planet that we can see evidence of a careful designer. The vast universe 
with its solar systems and galaxies are moving around in perfect order, pointing to an intelligent designer as well. Is it any wonder that the psalmist said, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Psalms chapter 8 verses 3 and 4. It sometimes seems unbelievable that a God who created and cares for such a vast universe would actually be concerned with us and our problems here on earth. Yet Jesus said that not even a sparrow falls to the ground that God does not notice. Do not fear, therefore, Jesus said. You are of more value than many sparrows. Matthew chapter 10 verse 31. What an amazing God. Not only did God make mankind in his image and give them a beautiful universe to live in, but he also takes care of them and provides all of their needs. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Psalms 145 verse 15 and 16. Let's take a look at just a few of the ways God cares for the needs of his creatures. Consider the water you drink. It is older than the pyramids, as old as the hills. Water may be polluted by chemicals or waste but when it evaporates into the atmosphere, it becomes clean and usable again and again, being turned into rain, dew or snow. And then there is the sun. If it were a little bigger or a little closer to earth, our oceans would boil away. If the sun were a little smaller or a little farther away, our atmosphere would freeze. Either way, life could not exist on earth. Not only did God create all things, he sustains all things. And the air we breathe is a gift from God. The Bible says, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind, Job chapter 12 verse 10, It's not an accident that the perfect balance of nitrogen, oxygen, argon and carbon dioxide are found in Earth's atmosphere. God knew just the right mixture needed for air to sustain life and health on Earth. When the disciple John was in vision on the Isle of Patmos, he was shown a scene in the heavenly throne room. Notice what he saw. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Revelation chapter 4 verses 10 and 11. How does knowing that we have a loving creator make a difference? It gives our lives purpose. Because of his love for us, he has surrounded us with evidence that our lives are not just the result of an accident. If we're looking, we can see clear evidence that he is our maker. The Bible says his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Knowing we are the creation of a loving God 
who has a plan for our lives, gives life meaning, value and purpose. So how does knowing that we have a loving creator make a difference? We know God loves us and is able to take care of us. Doesn't it give you peace of mind to know that if God can design and sustain everything in the universe, he can help you with the challenges in your personal life? No problem is too small or too big for him to handle. Jeremiah says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. What peace and confidence we can have knowing that nothing can happen to us that is too hard for God to care of. We can trust him completely with our lives because we know that he loves us. The Bible says quite simply, God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. We might not be able to understand all there is to know about God's creative power, but love is something that we can understand. And we can be sure that there is nothing in all the world that can separate us from God's love. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39. He loves us whether we are rich or poor, male or female, beautiful or ugly. He loves us whether we love him in return or not. There is nobody else like that. But most importantly, he loves us forever. For yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 As if there still might be some doubt in our minds about his love, God explains it in such simple and tender terms. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Isaiah 49 verse 15. God tried to demonstrate his love to man, but words and messages sent by prophets and angels were not enough. We didn't get the message. So then God sent his son. Jesus was the perfect example of the personality and character of his father. He said, He who has seen me has seen the father. John chapter 14 verse 9. If we really want to know what God is like and how much he loves us, we need to study the story of Jesus. He took our nature that he might meet our needs. He preached the good news of salvation to the poor. He healed the brokenhearted and gave sight to the blind. He fed the hungry and ate with the people in their homes. He forgave their sins and gave them hope for the future. His face was the first face many saw. His voice the first many ever heard. He spread life and joy throughout the villages and towns where he walked. His life was one of self-denial and thoughtful care for others. Why? Because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave 
his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Who is this God of the universe? He is the powerful creator. He is the amazing provider. He is the incredible designer. He is the loving redeemer. Many years ago, a little boy was in a tragic accident. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. The boy needed an immediate blood transfusion. No donor could be found. His father had the same blood type and agreed to donate blood. The doctor began to do a direct blood transfusion from the father's arm to the son. As the blood flowed directly from his arm through a plastic tube into his son's still, still body, he looked up at the physician and with tears in his voice said, Doctor, if you need to, take it all. Doctor, I am willing to give all my blood for my son. Our Heavenly Father looked at the world he created and saw it lost in sin. He gave all heaven could give in his Son. Jesus said, Father, if you need to, take it all. Take every drop of my blood to save my son, my daughter, my friend. If that's your desire to allow Jesus to save your life, and we're all in need of him, without his life given for us, we can never have life. Join me now and let's pray together. Lord, today we come to you realizing what an amazing and powerful God you are. You've created all things and ordered them for our blessing and benefit. You've given us life and you sustain that life and provide for all all of our many and varied needs. Today we want to worship you with all our hearts. We want to give you our highest praise and our deepest gratitude. We want to give you our hearts. If you have read each heart's desire, and just now I pray, that you will accept our worship and praise and take our hearts as we give them to you. Thank you for not only creating us, but for giving us the greatest gift possible in the gift of your Son. Because you have shown such love in giving your life for us, We choose to give our lives to you. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.